Good morning. In this course, we will explore gravitation models. We will see its purpose, its theoretical base, its applications, and the different variations that were used. The intuition starts with the analogy with the gravitation model of Newton. Regarding the planets, Newton stated that every point's mass attracts every single other point mass by a force pointing along the line intersecting both points. The force is proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Here, the force is symmetric between the two masses. It gave the ideas for a long time to use this law in geography about flows and interactions. In fact, observation showed that distance matters. Already at the middle of the 19th century, Carré and then Ravenstein began to apply the gravitation model to estimate migrations. Then Rigi used this attraction to estimate the limit of the area of influence between cities. Stewart used the same logic to estimate the area's market from any points named potentials. Tobler and Wilson generalized the model and brought some theoretical backgrounds. <coughs> Tobler stated in general that everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. The gravitation model can be used to observe and evaluate the distance friction, eventually its evolution, but it can be used as well as a prospective tool. If we know the different masses and the distance, we can guess the flows. Thus, if a city grows, the exchange of this city with the others will grow as well, and the gravitation model can tell us in which extent. On another hand, if one diminishes the limit to travel between two cities by building a, a, a new highway <coughs> or a TGV, we can guess that the traffic will increase as well because the distance diminished. This can conserve every kind of exchanges, people, information, goods. To measure the weight, what can take population, GDP, and every number of something, investment, laboratories, universities, nightclubs, shops, all the relevant masses for the considered interactions. Distance can be Euclidean, but it is often the functional distance by the physical networks, by train, car, airplanes. More practical studies also Consider travel time or cost of distance, which could also be psychological cost in terms of transactional cost. The general model considers that the flow Fij between two spatial entities is with the function of the churn effect of their mass and the distance which separate them. K is the intercept constant determined by adjusting the model, the function can take many forms. The general model stipulated that so the flows, Fig, between two spatial entities is proportional to the product of function of their mass and inversely proportional to a function of the distance, Dij, which separate them. Alpha is the distance decay or the friction of distance. It acts negatively. K is a constant determining the probability of interaction. Beta and lambda are the exponent of the mass indicating weights of each mass in the interaction. They act positively to uh, determine the flow of interaction. The simpler baseline gravitation model we can apply is the power model. The masses have 
exponents beta and lambda and the distance alpha. One can apply the Neperian logarithm, for example, to all the elements to come back to a linear simple equation. Therefore, it is easier to apply a multiple regression, for example, in R. The family of the function can be Poisson because we are in logarithm. Thus, we find easily the values of the coefficients of the term of the model. K is the, uh, the exponential of the intercept of the model, and the other values are similar uh, to the one of the linear model. Thus, like a classical regression, we can find R squared and we can calculate predicted values to map the residuals. The residuals permit to assess the goodness of fit and see if there is an heterosedasticity of the residuals, meaning that residuals are not distributed randomly. It gives insight on the quality of the adjustment of the model. Observed versus uh, expected uh, plots or compare densities plots may help to explore the residuals. The model can be extended in numerous variations. Additional variables can be added to remove constraints. Regarding the distance, we can add the membership of uh, to a district, a region, adding a parameters of the two entities belonging to the same group of area. It allows, for example, to assess border effect. Distances can be measured by the contiguity of regions between two regions or the length of the mutual borders. One also can add different kinds of constraints on origin, on destination of both. In addition, with power function, there is a problem with the distance, which is negative power function. If the distance is null, the function is infinite, infinite. Some authors add one, uh, making the function of distance always possible with power function. Thus, one can make vary the range with alpha. The range means the distance with a certain probability, uh, here 50%, and thus the range vary here from 20 kilometers to uh, 50 kilometers. It gives a different alpha. Or what can make vary the curve, making vary the beta? Thus the range is constant, but the curve uh, change. With exponential function, we relax the problem of the distance of zero. The function varies from one to zero, which is very convenient to obtain the function similar to a probability of interaction. What one can also make vary the range with alpha, whose making varies the function of interaction of 50% to a, a, a longer distance from 20 to 50 kilometers. Or uh, the curve can also vary with beta, the same. Most empirical analysis show that the function of distance is often this kind of exponential negative, as it is here. As the curve shows heat, it means that with short distances, interaction decreases slowly, and after a threshold, the interaction decreases abruptly. This is the case, for example, with commuting. Empirical analysis show that daily travels to work do not have a strong decrease until 20 minutes of travel. Thus, there is a sudden decrease between 20 and 30, and 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, the flow the flows continue to decrease, but softly. Finally, the advantage of the gravitation model is that it is based on the observation that 
we can measure. It is not necessarily symmetric as the Newton model is, but the very old models were symmetric. They can easily consider that space is not homogeneous and isotrope depending on the distance we consider. It can be distance by car, time, by plane, and so on. All the scales um, of applicability are possible from region, cities, districts, until countries, so it works both at local and global scales. However, the limits are that it is first a static model. Also for a poor model, it tends to infinity if the distance is zero, thus it is advised to use exponential models. Another limit is the use of standard statistics that assumes that the links are supposed to be independent of each other. Of course, they are not independent, but as a first approach of the evaluation of the effect of mass and distances, one can assume that they are. All in all, gravitation models are the first model to try when you have masses and distance to explain flows and interactions. It is also a very nice prospective tool. If the space evolves, a new road or the distribution of population change, the future flow may change following a gravitation model. Those parameters can be calibrated on the initial situation, and we assume that the propension of exchanging remains the same. Therefore, we can estimate the evolution of flows according to the new situation. Despite the limits, the gravitation model is still very used to estimate the evolution of flows after a new planning or economic or demographic changes affecting space and territories.